record. All right, so we're officially recording. So happy Thursday, everybody. I have no idea why every time on any group call we're on, I always feel the need to sing every time I hit record. Who knows? I'm weird. Anyway, um, so I posted a video um, that I listened to that was one of the summit workshops that I actually didn't have a chance to go to when I was at summit. Um, and it was really, really good. And it gave me some ideas of what I thought, um, I could share with you guys that would be super helpful. Um, just because they did a really good job. Um, the topic of the call was activities to create a full-time income. And they talked about, um, you know, this being your hobby versus being your career. And then it kind of broke down I have my massive thing of notes in front of me. It broke down um, what it looks like, um, like what your business looks like as a hobby coach and what it looks like versus a, like when you're a career coach or, you know, doing this full time. Um, and then it broke down for like each level and each rank what you needed to do, like very specific step by step type thing of what you should be doing to um, get to each rank. So what I wanted to do is, because the call was really long and I didn't want to overwhelm you guys with a bunch of info, and Trisha actually gave me this idea because she's freaking awesome, so thanks for the idea, Trisha. I figured I would um, just go through a little bit of it with you guys and just break it down um, into the most important parts that stood out to me that I thought would help you guys. So I'll just kind of start out, and I'm sorry that I'm looking down, but I'm looking at my notes. Um, I'll just start out with what they were talking about when they were talking about um, people that do coaching just for a hobby or people that do this um, as a career or want to make it their career. So people that do this as a hobby, um, let's see. So what they called it instead of hobby, they said, is it your side job or is it your profession? So if it's your side job, you might just be a user, quote unquote. So someone that uses the products, you know, you kind of pop in the groups here and there, you know, sometimes you get involved, sometimes you don't. Um, so that would kind of be someone that's doing this as a, a side job. Someone that wants to, and, and this can be someone that's working on making this into their career. It doesn't have to be someone that is already doing this as their career. So when you're treating this as your career, um, your profession, then you're planning everything. You're attending webinars, you're scheduling things, you're getting organized, you're taking everything seriously. Um, I know organization is one of my major struggles. So I actually have this calendar right here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Yes, I have an old school calendar. And I have to write down all the dates on here of when all of our groups are starting. And then I have like each week, you guys don't wanna see all of that because that's all my calls and stuff that are scheduled but I have to like write details and stuff out so that I don't forget to do it because if I don't write it down, then I'm going to forget it. And cause I'm just, I'm not naturally a planner. So I force myself to plan cause it helps me. So anyways, that was just kind of what they said about someone that does this as a side job versus um, doing it as a profession. Um, one of the girls that, um, there was two girls, one was Christine Dwyer, the other one was Michelle, I can't remember her last name, but they were both really successful coaches, and they were the two ladies that were talking um, on this call, or not call, on the workshop at Summit, and Michelle was saying that once she went to her first Beachbody event, um, that was one thing that they said, um, you know, people that are doing this as wanting to make it into their career, they make it a point to get to events. Um, and Michelle said that once she went to her first beach body event, I think it was just a super Saturday. She said it changed her mindset and she had been Emerald forever. I think she said she was Emerald for like nine months. And after going to that first event, she went diamond in just nine days after that event because her mindset changed. So, um, let's see, let me just kind of go through a couple more of the things. Um, and I said that to just kind of say that like these chicks are awesome that did the workshop just so that you guys kind of know a little bit about them. So these are just some things that they kind of said of what your business is going to look like if this is your side job or your hobby. 
So for hobby coaches, it looks like someone that just uses the products, they post online occasionally, they basically know how to use their Beachbody website, um, and they're socially involved in the groups. But again, it's not that consistent type thing. So they said what you can expect if you're someone that's treating this as a hobby or a side job. And let me just preface with this too, guys. I know that everyone has their own goals. Everyone has different lives, um, different priorities. I'm not trying to push my priorities or goals down anyone's throats because we all have different lives. And I want you guys to do whatever it is you want to do because it's your business, not mine. I'm here to help you make it into whatever you want to make it. And if you're just a hobby coach, that's totally fine. But if you don't, maybe you're a hobby coach right now and you feel like you don't want to be a hobby coach, you want to be, you know, a career coach, then that's why I wanted to go through this stuff to kind of point out some differences to you guys. So, um, yeah, I wanted to point that out first. Oh, my kitchen timer is about to go off in a second. So if I have to get up real quick, sorry. Um, so hobby coaches told you guys what it looks like. So what you can expect if you're a hobby coach, you can expect the accountability from the groups, you know, cause you'll be in the team pages, you'll be in the challenge groups, you'll get some extra motivation and stuff like that. You'll have a happier, healthier life. Um, you know, because you're probably being changed by the products, um, and by personal development and from being a part of the team, but you will also get low and random income because if you're not consistent and you're random, then your income is going to reflect the same. So let's see. Um, I was just reading if there's anything else that I wanted to mention about that. Not really, because I think you guys already know that stuff. Um, one other thing that they mentioned about people that are just doing this as a hobby or treating it as a hobby there is my kitchen timer, guys. Hang on. Let me just go turn it off real quick, and then I'll get right back into it. I'm sorry. It's just really loud. Okay. Sorry for the delay. So, hobby coaches, they were saying, I kind of said this at the beginning, but they were just saying that people that are doing this as a hobby they don't plan out their day to do the business efficiently, so that's why they don't get consistent results. They don't have a system, so if you don't have a system or regularity, your income will reflect that, like I just said. Um, so, yes, so I'll give you guys some tips on the end of, if you feel like that's you right now, of how you can change that. Okay, so career coaches, what career coaches looks like. Um, so you have good personal habits. Um, Maybe you have like an office space at home. I mean, literally, like guys, this is my office space. Like, this is my simple little desk. I have a bookshelf behind me if you guys can see it. Like, this is it. I didn't even have this before, um, but it really helps me to have a desk space. I don't sit here all the time, but it actually does help me feel more focused when I have a space set aside for work. Um, also just having a schedule, even if your schedule is only an hour, like, you know, okay, I'm going to wake up at 6 a.m. That way I know I get this done before work every day and I'm consistent with it. Wh whatever your schedule is, 6 a.m. to 7 a.m., maybe it's 8 p.m. to 9 p.m., maybe, it, you know, you pu you're putting more time into it so it's different than that. But I know for me, like, that's something that I had to do when I was working my um, job at the college because like you guys know, there were weeks where I worked 80 hours and it was crazy. So I had to schedule it in. Um, let's see what else you're consistent with your workouts, your eating and your social media content. So those are just some personal habits that you have as a career coach. Um, your personal business, you are hosting challenges consistently every single month. You're earning success club consistently every single month. You're inviting to your challenge groups every single day consistently, and you invite people to coaching every day and every week consistently. So those are just some behaviors. Um, within your organization, your coaches on your team, you are reaching down to not just your personally sponsored coaches, but to their coaches too to help them. You are doing calls with people that are on your team to mentor them, and you're getting them plugged into training. Um, excuse me. Now that kind of, 
I want to just say one thing about that. We, we do have a training system already that I have in place. You guys are welcome to plug people into that training system. Um, I'm more than happy for you guys to do that. Like I would love for you to do that, honestly, so you don't have to stress out about your own training. Webinars, um, as you guys know, we have our own team webinars, so you don't really need to worry about that. But I do highly encourage you to get on the phone and talk to your coaches, do Zoom calls with them. Like it makes such a big difference, such a big difference. It's so much easier than Facebook messaging. I know we don't all have time to, you know, sit on the phone and talk to each other all day, every day. But even if it's just once a week or once every other week, or even if it's just five minutes here and there, it just makes such a big difference. Like I cannot tell you guys how much happier and fulfilled I feel with my business since I have started doing calls like the team calls again these calls with you guys on Thursday nights and doing one-on-one -on -one calls and three-way calls with you guys I swear to you I feel like the happiest I've ever felt in my life because I love seeing you guys every day it makes such a big difference so um, that is one thing I wanted to mention so let me just review the first things I said hobbies or I'm sorry <laughs> Behaviors of a career coach, your personal habits, your um, personal business, your organization. And the last thing is you have to have the no matter what mentality. So even if it's the last day of the month, what's the last day of this month? So even if it's October 31st and you're at Success Club 2, you do whatever you can. You bust your booty to get to Success Club 5 no matter what. It's a non-negotiable. I can't even say that word, but you guys know what I mean. In the month of August when I moved, I told you guys I wasn't consistent with everything. I admitted to it. I tried, but with moving, it was crazy. Um, but I remember at the end of the month, I was on the phone with my mentor, and I was like, Paul, I am at Success Club 2 right now, Paul. I am usually at Success Club 20 by now. Like, I was so upset. But I was determined. I'm like, no matter what, I will get to Success Club 10. I don't care what I have to do. I don't care how many people I have to invite. I don't care. I'm going to bust my booty until I get there. So you just have to have that mentality to make it happen. Even if they did mention this too, even if you've never earned success club, you have to just throw more darts. You have to just do it more. Um, one of the things that Michelle talked about that she did was she watched tons and tons of videos that would help her on making her skills better um, because she was saying that she was not good at presenting the um, business opportunity. I wasn't either, you guys. I'm sure you guys know this by now, but I used to be terrified to talk to people about the coaching opportunity. I had no clue how to do a GSR call. I learned about GSR calls because I found out that Lindsay Matway did them and I was like, well, she's top coach. I should probably do what she's doing. But I sounded like a freaking retard when I started doing them because I didn't know what I was doing. But I just kept practicing it, and I just got better over time. The same thing with opportunity calls. The same thing with any in this business. Anything we do in this business, you just have to practice, practice, practice. And it'll get easier over time. The more darts you throw, the better results you're going to get, the closer you're going to get to that bullseye. Um, Michelle was saying that she would watch as many opportunity videos as possible. She would take her teddy bear. She would take her kids. She would take her friends, her husband, and just practice with them, you know, because that was comfortable to her until she felt like she was good at it. Um, and I was telling Chelsea this the other day when we were texting. Um, it had been a while since I had did three-way calls, um, you know, with you guys to close coach prospects. And I remember the first three-way call I got on, I was kind of fumbling around and I'm like, I was so nervous and I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm going to totally screw this up. So I hadn't done it in a while. But now that it's been like three weeks of me doing this back to back, I am just like, boom, 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 boom. I mean, yeah, I'm still scatterbrained and yeah, I still fumble, but I feel so much more confident about it now. And I'm like, it's just like, boom, I don't even have to look at a checklist. It's already in my head. I know how to do it. So I say that to say that it just takes practice. Um, so... I know I'm giving you guys a lot of info. I promise I'll be done in a second and we can open it up to talk about this all. Um, so that's what a career coach's life looks like. They have good personal habits. They have consistency in their personal business within their organization and they have a no matter what attitude. So what you can expect with um, being a career coach and doing those things, you will have a purpose-driven life. You will be able to design your life live your life like however you want to you know it may be a little bit uncomfortable now 
you may have to put in a little bit more work now, but I promise you that if you do that and you're consistent, it's going to be worth it later and it's going to pay off and you're going to have so much time freedom. That's what I keep telling myself on the days when I get tired and, you know, I've been on eight calls in a row. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm tired, but I love this and I'm going to help change a lot of lives and I'm not going to have to work this much forever. If I just do this for a short period of time, for however many years it takes me, you know, there's an end in sight, but I know that it's so that I can have that future where I can, you know, take a step back and take my family on vacations and do all that cool stuff. So anyway, stop talking about that. Um, you have unlimited career growth potential. You can give yourself a raise whenever you want to, but when it comes to working a regular job, how often do they really give you raises? I mean, let's be honest. The job that I had that I quit um, the last year that I was there, uh, I'm trying to think. They either stopped giving us raises or they like cut it in half or they were going to stop giving us raises the next year. I can't remember, but they basically took them away and it was like a 2% raise anyway. Um, with this business, you guys, you like, I have quadrupled my income within the matter of like a couple months just by doing more. So you can, you can have unlimited growth potential. Um, you'll have consistent residual income. That's what I always talk about. Um, that's why it's so important to build your team as big as you can grow your volume because then you can get to the point where you can fire your boss and you can pay off your debt and you can have financial freedom and give to charities and help your families and do all those things. And the last thing that you can expect is leaving a legacy behind, helping your team do the same thing. Honestly, I get more joy out of getting text messages and messages from you guys about the paychecks that you're getting or when people do quit their job or when people are having success in their businesses. That makes me way more happy than anything I've ever done for myself. When Whitney and Melissa quit their jobs this year, like I was about to cry. Like I was so much happier for them than I was when I quit my job. So that's what it's all about is leaving a legacy behind. Do it for your team. Like even if you're tired, even if you don't feel like doing it some days, like Wake up and do it because you care about your team and you care about your future. Honestly, that's why I wake up every single day is for you guys and for my clients because I don't wake up every single day and feel like I have rainbows and roses and clouds and daisies all around my head because sometimes I'm tired, but I wake up and do it because I love you guys. Um, let's see. So that's kind of what to expect with being a hobby coach versus being a career coach. There's a couple um, steps to each thing that I wanted to point out of, you know, things that you can apply to your business, what you can do to advance to the next rank. Um, I know I just gave you guys a lot of information at one time, though, so I am just going to unmute everyone for a second and see if anyone wanted to mention anything. Hang on. Or ask questions. Okay, so everybody's unmuted. Um, Hang on, let me mute Ashley back. I know she said she's in the living room with her husband. Okay, so Ashley's muted back. Does anyone want to ask anything about what I said before I move on to the next thing? Sorry, that was so much, and I got really excited, but I thought this was really good information. This is Becky. Can I ask something really silly? Yeah, nothing is silly. So, um... And, may, and this is probably just a rhetorical question, actually, now that I think of it. Um, is it better to focus more on building your coach base versus trying to invite a ton of people? I know that we obviously should do both. Um, but I feel like right now I'm sort of, especially with the new coach and, or grants and the coaching group that we're going to do on Monday, I feel like I'm focusing more on that. Um, and I guess maybe what's more lucrative in the, in the out, you know, yeah, that's a great question. Um, so let me say two things. Um, first, I think it is important to do both every day. Um, like I have it broken down on my business activity tracker. I mean, yeah, I do go on these crazy things where I send out like 200 invites to the glance group like I did today or like 200 invites to my beginning fitness group or whatever that we're calling it. I forgot. So I do do that. I do that once a month. But on a daily basis, I send out like two to five invites. Um, so I'll send out one direct invite to coaching a day. I send out five indirect invites a day. 
And then I usually send out like two challenge group invites a day. I mean, some days it's more, it just depends on who I'm talking to. Um, so I think it's important to do a little bit every single day because it's kind of that whole slight edge compound effect thing. I think it's important to host challenge groups because, you know, success club should be our goal every single month. And hosting challenge groups, like that's what built my business. That's why I did the post that I did the other night because I'm like, oh my gosh, why did I stop hosting like these shorter challenge groups? Because that's what built my business was hosting the short Shakeology groups and the free groups. So it's important to do those things as long as you have a good balance of all of it. Um, you know, you don't want to take on like 50 challengers or 20 challengers or whatever. But as long as you're getting to success club each month, um, like kind of what I try to do is get to success club as quick as I can. And then I kind of try to switch gears and focus more so on recruiting. Um, but one other thing I will say too, is that when you're going for diamond, um, and we've kind of talked about this before, Chelsea and I have talked about this a lot. And Lindsay, um, excuse me, has talked about this too. Excuse me. Sorry guys. Um, so when you're going for diamond, like, you know, there may be a period of time where you are more, more focused on recruiting and that's okay. Like, I do these like recruiting blitzes where I try to recruit as many people as I can for 30 days. So during that time, I, I do invite less to challenge groups. I mean, I'm still talking about it and posting about it, but during that blitz, you're going to focus more on recruiting. And then once that little blitz is done and you've gotten to, you know, your goal of 20 new coaches or diamond or whatever it is, then, you know, of course you still want to invite people to coaching weekly, but you can kind of, you know, go back to that balanced type thing where you're not focusing as heavily on recruiting because diamond tends to happen quick. Like once you get a couple people in, like people just keep coming and it's just like this whole thing where you build up a lot of momentum and it happens really quickly. So I hope that answers you. I know I kind of rambled with that, but does that answer what you're asking Becky? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a really good approach. Okay, cool. Did anyone else want to ask anything before I move on to the last part, which I should be able to make it really quick, by the way. I feel like such a preacher sometimes, and I don't mean to preach at you guys. I just get super excited about this stuff because I feel like it can help you guys so much, and I just get passionate about it. So please don't think I'm trying to preach at you. This is all because I care and because I want to help. Okay, so I'm going to mute everyone out again because I know this thing is probably going to cut us off and a time limit, and then I'll unmute everybody at the end. All right, so everyone that's on this call is already an Emerald coach, um, but I did just want to go through this because you will have people that you want to develop into Diamond, so you can go, or I'm sorry, you will have coaches on your team that you want to develop into Emeralds because that is what is going to make you Diamond. Um, so the way they broke it down in this workshop is they talked about different schools and like, you know, you have to go to elementary school before you go to middle school and then you have to go to middle school before high school and so on and so forth. Um, so they just kind of discussed each thing of what you're going to do in each school to get to the next level. So the first one is elementary school from going from coach to Emerald. So this will be what you want to help your coaches do to help them go Emerald. So the first thing is getting organized, um, keeping track of who you talk to every day. Um, Casey asked me about this earlier. She asked me how I do this. And what I do is I have a spreadsheet separate from my bat and I just write down the date, who I talk to, what social media network I talk to them on. Um, I try to write in notes about what we talked about. I'm trying to get better at doing that. And then you want to make sure that you write a reminder to yourself somewhere to follow up with them. Um, I started doing this because Melissa is awesome and had this great tip. She said she follows up with all the people she's forming in the week on Friday. So what I did is I just wrote that on my bat, or I should say typed it on my bat to follow up with all my people on Fridays. So that's what I do. So the first one's organization. The second thing um, from going coach to Emerald is scheduling time. We already talked about this, um, having your business hours, when you're going to set aside um, your time to do all your activity, for Beachbody, because um, we're all just, you know, we're all busy. Like we all have stuff going on. We all have obligations. Um, so we just have to make the right choices to fit it in around our schedule. So that's why scheduling a time is so important. Um, and one thing that they were saying that they did that kind of helped them um, if they felt like they didn't have enough time 
um, to fit this in, they wrote down what they did throughout the day. Okay, we have 10 minutes. Um, they wrote down what they did throughout the day to just kind of see what they were doing every minute, every hour of the day to see if there was anywhere where they could squeeze in time. I mean, let's be honest. I know there's things that I do throughout the day that I don't need to do that's wasting time. I think we're all that way. So that's um, the first two things, organization, scheduling time to do your business hours, and then just having the basics set up, having your coaching website set up, um, having a central location for all your documents, which that's our Dropbox. We already have this. Um, they also said that they have their coaches do a personal why video of why they became a coach. And this is something I was going to talk to you guys about at a later point in time, but they have their coaches, whenever they get one or two coaches on their team, they have them make a Facebook group for their team. Like you don't have to have a team name or any of that. You just want to have a central location of um, where you have your team members so that you can um, be in constant dialogue with them. Because the Fit and Faithful page is growing so fast and there's a lot of information in there. So again, you don't have to have your own um, team name or anything like that, but you just want to have a location where you have your personally sponsored coaches so that you guys can be in constant dialogue and you can funnel updates and important, you know, things that are coming up to them. And that's something that we can talk about later. Don't feel like you have to go jump on that right now. Um, so that's elementary school going from coach to Emerald. So middle school going from Emerald to diamond. Um, I'll review the elementary school real quick. Organization, scheduling time, and then setting up the basics. That's Coach to Emerald. So going Emerald to Diamond. Um, this is something that we already have in place because I did it all for you guys. It's on the Dropbox. So having templates, templates for conversations um, for yourself and for your coaches to follow. So, um, you know, like our sample invite conversation. What do you say to people when you're talking to them about challenge groups? The sharing the business opportunity document. What do you say to people when you're talking to them about coaching? Our indirect invite, um, you know, how to send out an indirect invitation about challenge groups or coaching. How to invite someone to the coaching at a glance group. All of that's already in the Dropbox for you guys. So you don't have to go and do any of that work. It's already been done for you. It's in our Dropbox. But just make sure that you're using it and your team is utilizing it. The second thing is having a challenge group system. Again, this is already something that I've done for you guys. Um, so just, you know, following it. If you don't, like, I don't want you guys to feel like you have to follow what's on our challenge group calendar that I posted the other day, um, which is in the Dropbox, if you don't know what I'm talking about. Um, sorry, I just had a total brain fart. I was thinking of two things at once. Um, so just having a system that you follow every single month, whether that's your system or the system that we use. I want you guys to do whatever you feel comfortable with, but I think for new coaches, they need that roadmap there in front of them. They need to see something so that they have a clear direction of where to go. That's why I, did, I thought we really needed that calendar to really help people. So that's the second thing. And the third thing is just having, sorry, my eye itches, having an invitation system. Um, so hang on, my notes, I'm trying to decipher them, they don't make sense. Okay, so just having a process for your invitation system, how you're going to invite people, you know, whether you're going to send an indirect invite or a direct invite, how you're going to follow up with people, and just having um, different videos and webinars available for them. Again, that's something I already did for you guys. You guys don't have to do that. You just have to use what I made for you guys already and just put, put that into place, put systems into place. Once you get organized and you have systems into place, it may feel overwhelming. I know it did for me because I don't like organizing. I'm not good at it. I tend to like just push it off and shy away from it because I don't like it. But when I took the time to do it, it didn't take as long as I thought it would. And it helps me feel like so much less stressed out. Like I sit down, I know exactly what I'm going to do. And then once you do that system and you do it over and over and over, then it will help you to just be unstoppable and it's going to make life so much easier. Um, and, you know, you want to be able to teach your coaches to do that, too. And everyone's system is different. You just have to find what works best for you. So those are the three things, going from Emerald to Diamond. Using templates for conversations, having a challenge group system, and having an invitation system. Um, and one thing they did say, too, with um, inviting people to the business opportunity is to have a posture of, you know, I don't need you. And, you know, 
that sounds kind of mean, but they didn't mean it that way. Like you don't want to be desperate is the point they were trying to make. You don't want to be like, I just need to get coaches. I need to get coaches. I need challengers. I need to get challengers. I need to get this, get that. Caleb Thomas actually made an awesome video about this yesterday. That was hilarious. Um, but you know, you don't want to focus on getting people. It's about helping people, not getting people. We don't need people. Like we want to work with the people that we truly want to help and we don't need anybody. You don't want to appear desperate. That's not professional. So that is one other thing that they said with the invitation system. Um, so that was really it guys. Um, do you guys need me to go over this? Let me unmute you guys. Unmute. Do you guys need me to repeat anything or do you have any questions about what I said? No, I think it was great information. I liked the um, the last bit about trying not to sound desperate. Um, I think we all kind of get that, especially toward the end of the month. Um, so just keeping that in mind of like, hey, there's this cool opportunity. I'm here for you if you need me, you know, versus just please join my team. Yeah. I mean, we're all guilty. Like, I know I was desperate in the beginning because I'm like, I just want to be diamond. Like, I need you. I need you. I need you. I need to get people. Um, and you know, it's great like to have goals. And of course we want to achieve those ranks and everything. We just have to like find the happy balance of it. And it's just about like how you posture it. I mean, you know, cause you can, you can have that goal in the back of your head of like, Oh yeah, when this person signs up, I will go diamond or whatever. And that's great. And that's fine. But you know, we don't want to make that person like feel that pressure, or, you know, make them feel like we're desperate if that makes sense. Okay, guys, I feel like I just word vomited on all of you, but this was just stuff that I felt like, I don't know, I was just like, oh my gosh, like this makes so much sense. I feel like this would really help everybody. Um, would it help you guys if I kind of like typed out like the bulleted points on a slide and posted it in the group? Sure. Okie dokie. I will do that real quick. Um, I'll probably do it tonight so I don't forget. Anything else you guys want to talk about? We have two minutes left on here, but if you guys want to go into, um, sorry, I can open up another call and we can totally just like talk about anything. If you guys want to brainstorm anything or share any successes or share any struggles, or if you had any other general questions about anything not related to what I just talked about. You guys let me know. Totally up to you. Is everyone good? Okay. Or do you want to go? What? Oops, sorry. This is Becky. I just said I think I'm good for now. Okay. Is everyone else good? We have less than a minute on this one. I'm going to take that as a yes. <laughs> I will type this up and post it um, sometime tonight because I'll be gone tomorrow. So I will do that. I'm going to say bye to you guys before this hangs up on us. So I love you guys. This will be recorded. Oh, there's Ashley. Hi, Ashley. I get to meet Ashley this weekend, you guys, in Tennessee. Yay. Anyways, <laughs> love all you guys. I'll post the recording and post the notes and I'll talk to everyone soon and have a great night. Bye. Bye.